I think all of you will agree with me that there are times when you are programming that you need to evaluate certain expressions. For example, you are programming a math quiz game, um, a game that is basically like a mathematics quiz that, you know, um, that involves evaluating certain mathematical expressions and giving the answer to the user, something like that. Or imagine you are creating a calculator. The calculator will take a mathematical expression from the user and evaluate that expression, then give the user the the result, the answer to that particular mathematical expression. Imagine you want to do all of this and you are working in Python. And we all know that in Python, every input that you take from the user is in the form of a string. The input that you take from the user is in the form of a string. So that would mean that the user would have to enter the mathematical expression as a string. Now imagine you have taken this string. It will be very difficult for you to be able to filter out the numbers, the symbols, and then the letters. It will be very difficult for you. But then, there is one thing that would help, and that's what I'm going to talk about in today's video. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about the inbuilt function, the evaluate function, which is an inbuilt function in Python. And then this function allows you to be able to evaluate certain expressions that you give it. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul. For those of you who are already subscribers, you already know me. For those of you who don't know me, please do also subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos on the channel. We do more of these around here. So guys, I'm going to start off by creating a variable called result. And I'm going to assign this to the function that we are talking about. Now, as I've said earlier, this evaluate function is inbuilt into Python, which means that you wouldn't need any external package to be able to use it. Now, the evaluate function takes three parameters, takes three arguments when you are calling it. Now, the first argument is the expression, and this expression should be a string. So just any Python expression that is possible, you can write it in the form of a string and then it would be evaluated for you. The other two arguments that should be passed to this are not really required. Unlike the expression, the other two arguments are not required. So the, third, the second argument is the globals and the third argument is the lookouts. First of all, let's start with the first one, which is just the expression. So I'm just going to write an expression over here. Let's say five plus seven, so I printed out results and I'm going to run the code. Now you see, when I run it, it actually gives me the sum of, you know, five and seven. I quickly write sum, sorry, sum five, seven, or maybe five, six, and I'll put this into a list or something like this. Yeah, what in the string is a valid Python expression, which means that if I run this particular code, I should get the sum of five and six, which is 11. Now the second part is any variable that I use in this expression. So I could do something like x plus 5, right? And I'm going to pass in as a, um, a global variable. And I'm going to do x. This x should have a value, maybe 67. So it's going to add this 67. It's going to replace the 67 with the x over here. So it's kind of like the variable definition and then it's going to put the result, it's going to calculate the result of 67 plus 5, and that will give you 72. And the third one that I talked about is lookout. To differentiate between the two of them, it's not all that straightforward. The only difference is that if I'm talking about a glo global variable, it means that variable is something that's in my source code, something that I'm using in the original source code. But when it comes to the local variables, the local variables are the variables that are only in the expression that I'm passing to the evaluate function. So that cannot be used anywhere else in my program. But then the global variables can be used you know, at other places in the program. That's the major difference between the two of them. Let me go back to the code and I try the same thing again. I write x plus 5 over here and I pass the x as a, a, a local variable. The second argument is the local variable. It would also give me 72 because I'm giving it a definition for my local variable that I'm talking about as x. So if I'm supposed to use maybe a z over here, I could put a z here and then maybe I can put an x here. So x plus z plus 5. And I'm going to make the z equal to an actual z. Then I'm going to create a variable called z, which is called maybe 25, something of the sort. So, huh. so if you have something like this, so this becomes my expression. 
this is the, the dictionary that gives the global variables that I'm using inside this expression. So what I have over here. And then this particular one, okay, this should be x. That's better. So the x is the local variable that I'm using. And it is just for this expression. But I cannot use it anywhere else in this Python file. And it gives me the total result, which is 25 plus 67 plus 5. And that is 97. So guys, that's it for this particular video. Now, if you want more about this particular function, this evaluate function, I'll leave a link in the description to this particular article. It's on Real Python's website. Gives information about how to evaluate expressions dynamically in Python and gives all of that. Talks about understanding it in the whole lot and how to use it appropriately. So guys, I'll see you guys in the next